guys, it's Miss Weston. Welcome back. We are actually starting our journey to finish the book this week. So we are going to be reading chapters 13, 14, and 15. And by the end of the week, we will be done with the Watsons Go to Birmingham, which makes me sad, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. So we will go ahead and get started for chapter 13 with our journal response. So our quick write for today is, how do you show that you care for your siblings? or people in your family. So that could be maybe you have brothers and sisters. Um, so you're going to write about how you show that you care about them. Or it could also be that maybe you are an only child, but there are cousins in your family or family friends or neighbors. Um, how do you show that you care for those people? So for example, I have a brother and sister who are both younger than me. And to show that I care for my sister, um, I always send her funny TikTok videos that I think she'll like um, because I know that we have a similar sense of humor. And I'll also call her because we don't live in the same state just to see how she's doing. Um, when we were younger, I would show that I cared for my sister by picking her up from school every day and asking her about her day. Um, she went to a different school than me because she's younger than me. So I was in junior high. She was in elementary and my brother as well. And I would pick them up from school and, and make them dinner and ask them how their day was. So that's how I showed how I cared for my siblings. So go ahead and pause the video, and when you're ready, um, when you've finished answering the prompt, you can resume, and we'll get started with vocabulary. All right, if you are back with me, that means that you've um, answered your, your question of the day, your general response, and you are ready to begin with vocabulary. So the first word that we're going to talk about, which is actually the second word on your paper, is the word strange. And the definition of strange is something that is unusual or surprising. So, for example, Miss Weston thought it was strange that when she entered her classroom, the students' chairs were stacked on top of their desks, just like this picture here. Because in my class, in Miss Layton's class, and in Miss Ngali's class, we stack our chairs um, on the floor. We don't put our chairs on the desk. So that would be something that was very strange, very unusual, very surprising. If I saw that, I would be... I would think that was very strange. So go ahead and pause the video and write down the definition and resume the video when you're ready for the next word. Okay, the next word is electrocuted. So to be electrocuted means that you have an injury that's caused by an electric shock. So for example, the dog chewed up her phone charger so she could not plug it into the outlet or she could be electrocuted. And you can see in this GIF here that there are all these cords that are kind of torn and um, taped up and there's sparks that are coming out of the outlet. And so if, you know, somebody were to touch that, they could be electrocuted. That would be very unsafe because it's not allowing the electricity to flow out of the outlet Um in a safe way. You can see all the sparks. That's definitely strange to use one of our other vocabulary words and could really hurt someone. So that is the definition of the word electrocuted. Go ahead and add that to your notes and then resume the video when you're ready for our last vocabulary word. All right, our last vocabulary word is whirlpool. And I'm going to have you write down the definition, and then I'm going to show you a couple really cool videos to show you what a whirlpool is. So a whirlpool is a rapidly rotating mass of water. Rapidly means very quick. And so you can see in this picture here, um, there's a whirlpool, and the person's getting sucked in, and they're spinning and spinning spinning and spinning around very quickly, and it's dragging them down to the bottom. Um, so go ahead and write down that definition in your notes, and then resume the video when you're ready to see um, some examples of what a whirlpool looks like. All right, if you're with me now, that means that you have finished writing down the definition. So I'm going to show you a video about what it looks like to swim with a whirlpool, which is actually very dangerous. So the person who filmed this is um, actually very uh, skilled and, and trained. So this is not something you would ever want to try at home, which you'll learn about in the book. But here's a video of what a whirlpool looks like. So you can see it's kind of almost like a little water tornado. And it's just going in the same pattern. It's getting faster 
and it's starting to suck in the leaves and the materials that are on the top of the water down into um, into the, the bottom of the water, the body of water. Um, so this next part, the guy is about to actually jump into the water so you can see what it looks like. And again, this is not something you'd ever do at home. It's something that's very dangerous and that takes a lot of skill. So he's about to jump in. And you can see the whirlpool underneath looks like a tornado and how it's it's really tight together and it's really bringing everything around it is getting sucked in and then sucked down to the bottom. All right, I'm gonna show you one more video of um, a whirlpool and this is a, these are twin whirlpools. Had a bit of rain last night, a big field. Two very serious whirlpools happening this year. So those are two video examples of whirlpools and I'm just going to share one more thing with you, um, some facts about whirlpools on um, this website that is all about whirlpools. So how do whirlpools form? Well, they form when water is going through a really narrow path and as the water is going through that path, um, it's accelerating or speeding up the force of the water and as the water is pulled into the opening by gravity, so gravity is pulling it, it's accelerating, it's beginning to speed up. And as it's doing that, then it begins to spin. The water begins to spin and the direction of the spin um, is discussed in the next part that I'll go over with you. Um, but it, it creates a vacuum where objects, um, bubbles, water molecules, anything floating around nearby is sucked into this vortex and it's very difficult to get back out of it um, because again gravity is pulling the water down and as the water is entering the whirlpool it's accelerating and spinning faster and faster and faster uh, so looking down here what direction does the water spin um, it really does go in different directions so it just kind of depends on the circumstance that um the whirlpool was created under like in the video we watched just before this he said that there was a storm so it just has to do with the the situation but whirlpools are very dangerous um for for people especially if you're not a skilled swimmer and so that's going to be something that's very important in the chapter that you read today so the last thing that i want to go over with you before we read the chapter is that um this is is going to be a stressful chapter um because you can probably guess that there is going to be a situation with a whirlpool. And so it's going to feel very stressful when you're reading along with it because you're not going to know what, what happens to the character and um, you're going to feel you know scared for them. And so when we're feeling that way, when we have some feelings or some emotions that we need to process or we need to let out in order to feel better or just in order to think about our emotions, I've included three different ways that you can do that. So the first is art. So if you're reading the chapter or when you're done reading the chapter and you're feeling like stressed or anxious or sad, one way you can share your emotion would be to draw or sketch your feelings. Um, and we did provide a box for you uh, in your packet where you're able to do that, but you can also do it in with any of your own materials at home. So that's the first way is through art, draw, sketch your feelings. The second way is through words. So you can write down how you're feeling or write down any questions that you have about what you read today. And the third is out loud. So you can talk to someone at home. You can talk to a classmate. If you have their phone number, you can give them a call or text them. Or you can even reach out to your teacher about how the chapter made you feel through Google Classroom or through office hours. So as we're reading, I just want you to know that it's okay if you start to feel stressed. Um, these are some tools you can use to help you process the information, okay? So we are going to get started with the chapter. Here is your focus question. How does Byron show love to his siblings? So just like the question I asked you at the very beginning 
of the chapter, um, or at the very beginning of the video, excuse me, how do you show care for your siblings? I want you to focus on how Byron is doing the same. How, how is Byron um, maybe acting differently than he did when he was in Flint, Michigan? So the next video you'll watch is chapter 13, and you'll be reading along with chapter 13 in your book, and then we will come back together to go over our questions and our activities for the day. Hope you enjoy the chapter. Bye.